All right, guys, appreciate y'all joining us. Um, wrapping up last week uh, against Texas State, Offensive Player of the Week it was D.K. Billingsley, 16 carries, 70 yards. Defensive Player of the Week, Carlton Marshall, 11 total tackles. Um, special Teams Player of the Week, our long snapper, Quentin Skinner, who's had a really good year all year. Um, and then uh, job taker of the week on defense was Cam Reese from Auburn, Alabama. Uh, offensive job taker of the week was Jamison Holcomb from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And special teams job taker of the week was Luke Hodge from Aniana, Alabama. Um, Nathan Harris, John Johnson Service Award winner last week. Uh, DK Billingsley, who was also offensive player of the week. DK helped set up um, a bunch of tables on campus for homecoming at the alumni house during the week and did a couple other things on campus to serve outside of maybe the normal roles that our guys do. And then the Corey McCuller Spirit Award uh, for the week um, is going to go to two guys. One has been out with injury, DeAncre Lewis, who had uh, is nearing a return, we feel like, and um, has had great energy on the sideline at the game. And then Elijah Culp. Um, Elijah plays corner for us. Did not play maybe a significant number of snaps at corner, but played a lot of really good quality snaps on special teams and has been ready when his number's been called on defense and really had a positive attitude the last couple of weeks. So proud of those guys. Always good to get the win um, at home on homecoming. Um, not always our best football had over 400 yards of offense and held the opponent to under 300. Um, the score was a little closer than I'd like for it to have been, but we found a way to win. Probably the biggest um, uh, positive at the end of the game was our offense, I think, got the ball back with 528 left in the game, up 17 to 14. And when they knew we were going to run the ball, we ran the ball and put the game on ice, which was really encouraging. Defensively, really just had to clean up the one explosive play. You guys could probably sense my frustration after the game on Saturday in the third quarter after that one explosive play we gave, gave up where I thought we played about as poor of a, a defensive snap as I've seen us play all year. I was very disappointed in that one play. But other than that one play, I thought we played pretty, pretty good football. So that's wrapping up last week. Moving on to this week. Got a rivalry game, short week. A uh, lot to get ready for. A very much improved opponent. Um, this team we're getting ready to play is not the same team they were the last year or any year before that, to be quite honest with you. They're a really good football team. I think a lot of people are talking about them maybe being the best group of five team in college football and going to like the New Year's Six Bowl games and stuff right now with where they're ranked. So um, we got our work cut out for us. They're really good and uh, going to be a great opportunity. Um, to, to play a, a high-level opponent in a conference game. So with that, take open it up and take questions. Yeah, John, Craig Stevenson, AL.com. Um, where are you at on quarterback this week? I know uh, Gunner had to come out of the game and Jared finished it for you guys. They're both uh, available to my knowledge. Um, have The injury report I got this morning, I think they're both going to be available. So we'll have – I think we'll have both available for the game. Man, he is the real deal. Uh, he's got real big arm talent, quick release, uh, really good anticipation, um, good with his feet, good pocket awareness and presence. He's a huge difference um, with their team. Him, LaDamian Webb at running back, playing really good football. I know he was a little bit dinged last week, it looked like, but he's played at a high level. The receivers are all playing really good. Their tight ends are good. Their O line's much improved. Offensively, they're night and day from where they were last year. And a lot of it is because of Carter. I mean, he's a he's a really good football player. Hey John, it's John and Dustin. I wanted to ask you about Craig Slocum. He's second on the team in tackles, and you know how is he so effective at, at, at getting to the football from from the secondary? Well, let me say this first and foremost. Our two leaders in tackles, Carlton Marshall and Craig Slocum, right? Both of them former walk-ons that came here 
my last season here as an assistant in 2017. So a testament to two young men who have tremendous work ethic and desire to push themselves to be their best. Um, Craig is from uh, Florida, and he is uh, he's a worker, man. Um, he, he puts as much time into his craft as anybody I've ever been around. Um, he, you know, a few weeks ago when we got back from the, the last loss we had, um, we got back at, I don't know, midnight, 1230 from that plane ride. And uh, I went to church on Sunday morning. I came in the office at about 11. And Craig Slocum was sitting there in the DB room by himself watching the tape. Uh, uh, unsolicited by the coaches. We had no meetings with them at that time. We had meetings later um, the, the next day. But he, he, he puts as much hard work into his development to be the best he can be as anybody on our team. And no surprise, good things happen to people that work really hard. Yeah, we'll go down third, uh, Wednesday night. Um, uh, so we'll go down Wednesday night, stay in Mobile Wednesday night, and then treat it like a normal road trip, just like we would any other week. Um, we won't leave early in the day Wednesday. We'll we'll do meetings and stuff here and then head down. Did you have a practice day yesterday? We did. So Sunday is no, our normal day off. Our players will get um, – next Saturday and then really most of next this Friday coming up off as well. So Sunday we we got to speed up the schedule a little bit, playing on Thursday. Um, and really probably having to be really um, flexible in regards to our practice schedule uh, because it is our eighth straight game in eight weeks and we're doing the eighth one on a short week with a bye to follow. So we're having to, you know, like you guys have heard me say this before, but you got to be smart, tough, not dumb, tough. Uh, so we got to. It takes what it takes to be prepared to play the game the right way. Um, so there's a lot that we're having to get in in a short time of what we need to see picture-wise from our opponent and what we need to do to help give our guys the best chance to be successful, but also make sure that they show up Thursday night uh, as fresh as possible. Because you know, it doesn't really matter. But we got to take into consideration that it's it's our eighth straight game, and South had a had a bye two weeks ago. So. We've got to make sure our guys show up ready to play fast uh, Thursday night. Coach, I'm Rollins, Jamal in Montgomery. Um, I know there's no need for any extra added juice or anything with this game, but when you look at the conference standings on the West, you guys are one and two respectively. Um, does that maybe, I guess, give way to a little more, you know, we, we really want to get this game, because if we win this game, then we'll be at the top of, of, of the division there? Yeah, I think that's pretty clear. I mean, you know, there's a lot of things around the game. The battle for the belt, it being a rivalry game, which is what makes college football fun, right? Like, that's exciting. Um, the conference implications, right? Um, we're both one win away from bowl eligibility, and everybody's been talking about South, one of the schools that could be in the New Year's Six, potentially. And... Um, it's on TV is what I was told earlier today. I didn't really – I haven't been paying attention to that. I don't care if we play the game on TV, the radio, or whatever, but it's on national TV. Um, but if you get caught up in all the stuff that's on the periphery that really has no effect on how you play the game, you can get distracted too. So while there is motivation, I, if, I sh if I got a problem to motivate our team to play in this game Thursday night, then – we got real issues that are more severe than what I can even try to figure out. So if you're not emotionally excited about playing this game, you probably need to check your pulse or figure out why you're doing what you're doing. Um, for us, it's about really focusing on making sure you're prepared and that you're ready to execute at a high level and play with tremendous effort. And yeah, there's a lot of things around the game. And I addressed those things with our team yesterday, but I'm not going to talk all week about the prize that may be at the end, it's about how you run the race, all right? And if we get so focused on the prize, you lose sight of running the race the right way, and we got to prepare to run the race the right way. Hey, Coach Jim, an update on Tez or any other guys that are bingo? Um, 
Tez is uh, good to go. He'll be he'll be cleared. He's fine. He he was uh, could have gone back in the game. It looked like Saturday, but just kept him out there at the end. Um, who else? Who else you want? I'll give you answers, guy by guy. Give me names, and I'll give you I'll give you answers. Uh, uh Questionable. Looked good running around yesterday. Um, not going to push him, but did look really good yesterday at practice. Who's that? McDonald's. Uh, not going to play. All right. Oh, man, you mentioned you guys were able to close it out in the running game and that you guys were going to run. It's kind of nine days in the way the running game was to start the year. So can you just talk about the film as always the line in the running game? Yeah, that's a great question. I think it takes more time to develop the O-line group than any group in football. Um, and then I also think sometimes the O-line – gets too much credit when things go good in the run game and too much blame when it goes bad because it takes everybody. It takes the quarterback getting us in the right calls, us targeting the run the right way, the receivers blocking downfield, the tight ends are involved in the run game, obviously, and the backs to, to have good vision on where they're running and hit the hit the hole or where we're supposed to be aiming or targeting the run. And so um, have seen a lot of growth there, um, not a finished product. But I do think there's been growth, and we're improving there. We're going up against a really good run defense this week. Um, I think last week our opponent only gave up like 60-something yards rushing. So um, we, we've got our work cut out for us in regards to making sure that we find ways to run the football. Hey, it's Craig again. Uh, it'd be a hell of a thing for them to make the play on Thursday night if it wasn't on TV. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I coached, Craig, I coached one double A non scholarship football for five years, and that, they made us play at all kinds of different times. I didn't know. I think sometimes they made us play at that level just so we weren't competing with the high schools. You know what I mean? Yeah, I got you. Hey, uh, you know, I kind of run around the same way, uh, different ways to ask the same question about Carlton, but just his importance to this program from the beginning of his career to now. Uh, what does he mean to the Troy program? Yeah, I mean, Carlton, uh, I had the privilege of um, recruiting him here, and then I left. Uh, and so I've known him a long time. I followed him when he was at McGill Tulin. Um, you know, I got to know him really watching him play a lot as about a sophomore in high school. And I think Carlton um, may be the most instinctive, natural linebacker I've ever coached. And I've coached – I've been around some good ones. I mean, I've coached a first-rounder, you know, a couple of them. So uh, – He's very instinctive, uh, does everything the right way. He is a, a very um, passionate kid about what he does. He's a great teammate, right? Like, he, it's not all about him. He's for the team. Um, and I think to be from Mobile uh, and, you know, out of high school, I know South didn't even really talk to him, not, and to nobody's fault, but they just didn't give any attention. A lot of people didn't give him any attention. All right, and he had some Division Two and one double A opportunities, and then I think um, when he decided to officially choose coming here, um, we knew that he had the opportunity to become a really high level player. Now I'm not gonna lie; I didn't know that he was gonna do everything he's done. I mean, he's exceeded maybe anyone's expectations except for his own, because I think he's always known that this was his plan. Um, but couldn't ask for a better young man. He means the world to our program. He's really what Troy football is about. Kids like him that bet on themselves, that maybe overachieve in some people's eyes, but meet their own expectations. Um, cannot say enough good things about that young man. Honored to be able to watch him play. I mean, I, you know, so proud of him. Can't wait to watch him play Thursday and excited I get to watch him play a few more games after that, too. Yeah, one more thing. The, you know, the game and a half he was out, how much you guys miss him and what kind of levels he's been playing at since he got back. Oh, we missed him. You don't lose a guy like that and not miss him. Um, we missed him significantly. Uh, but he has come back and brought the same value he's always brought on the field. Um, he's a tremendous playmaker, but he's also – he sets the tone and he – uh, holds others accountable for the standard that we want to play defense at here. And um, he, like I said, he affects other people at a high level. So 
he, you know, good players play the game the right way and do their job. Great players affect other people while doing their job at a high level. That's what Carlton is. He's a great player. Thanks. Thank you. I have one more, Coach uh, Stromalis, come all again. Yeah. Bikes. Um, I know Deion Crave, you know, has been out a couple of weeks, and, and Michael really had a big catch for you guys there um, in the second quarter that helped you get you guys in the field goal range. Just talk about his, his ability to be able to make plays, I guess, when, you, when his number is called. Yeah, Mike Vice, you know, he played at Sanford in more of an air raid type system uh, that threw the ball a lot more. And he's been asked to do maybe more um, holy, more holistic tight end responsibilities in regards to blocking at the point and maybe cutting off the backside edge on some run game stuff and running routes. And so he's, he's, we, he's being asked to do more than he's ever been asked to do. Very natural catcher of the football, good route runner, uh, an aware kid. Um, think he's got a lot of bright, uh, a lot of bright things in front of him. Uh, proud of his growth and development in so many ways. And he stepped up. He's made an impact on our special teams. And he's made an impact on our offense. And um, feel good about, you know, you get DeAncre back, and you've got Mike, and you've got Allen Dyke, and you've got AJ Lewis. I think that tight end room has got some quality pieces in that room that care about playing the game the right way and play it really hard. And uh, I think Mike has stepped up. And uh, like I said, I think Mike is just scratching the surface of where he can go with his development.